is one of the oldest and most respected names in motordom. For a quarter of a century, it has stood for dependable and economical transportation. Since 1914, that name has meant integrity of manufacture. Modest enough were the beginnings of this great enterprise. On the outskirts of Detroit sprang up a little group of buildings. Instantaneous was the success of the car, for the public was quick to realize that although Dodge was a newcomer in the industry, the Dodge name meant old ideals, the ideals of honest craftsmen since the world began. And so this public acceptance made necessary the erection of two more buildings before the car was 12 months old. And as time went on, the fame of the Dodge car spread. Back in Detroit, more buildings arose year after year, substantial four square monuments to the faith of the nation in a manufacturer that deservedly won and unfailingly held its goodwill. More impressive evidence of Dodge's determination always to build for the future is the vast new truck plant, all ready to start production. Another monument to dependability, it is the most modern and the largest plant in the world, devoted exclusively to the production of commercial vehicles. Amazing has been the development of Dodge in the span of a quarter of a century. And one reason that its growth has been steady is the result of typically Dodge insistence on the best that money can buy in buildings. Brick on brick, these structures have risen in good times and in bad times, for despite business depressions and recessions, Dodge has marched steadily and firmly on, confident that you can't stop America, always optimistic for the future, forever pledged solemnly and irrevocably to produce ever better, safer, and more economical motor cars that this nation shall go forward. That is part of the inspiring story of Dodge up to now. 25 years ago, life moved at a slower pace than it does today. Folks pretty much stayed home, and they didn't seem to mind it either. Dad came home from work one night, all excited about something. But nobody was greatly worried. The war was in Europe. We'd never get into it. Much more important was what mother was going to have for supper. Nobody suggested a rubber a bridge, nor a double feature at the neighborhood movie. Instead, mother and dad spent the evening quietly in their own front parlor. When people traveled, the familiar puffing locomotive hauled the train. Daredevils at the county fair risked their necks in flying machines. Then, in the fall of that year, came another announcement, one that closely affected the lives of this family as it has affected the lives of millions in every part of the earth. In the family circle, there is now a newcomer, a brilliant stranger who is soon to be accepted as a faithful friend and companion. For the first Dodge has been created, the first of a multitude of dependable servants prepared to serve their masters for many years. Before our family adopted the shining Dodge as their own, there was an announcement of the birth of the car, momentous because it was the first description of the car that was destined to be taken into the heart of motoring America, and also because of its restraint. There is the initial appearance of the Dodge in print. Observe the simplicity of that advertisement. Name of the product, picture of the product, name of the maker. Nothing else except a bald listing of its specifications below that four-word statement. It speaks for itself, no boasting, Dodge simply said, there it is. Those brief statements in fine print did the boasting and thrust Dodge immediately into a prominent position in the automotive world. For this car that cost only $785 was just the automobile America was waiting for, with four cylinders developing 30 to 35 horsepower. A big car with 110 inch wheelbase, equipped with electric starter, electric lights, and both windshield and top were included and were not extras. Of course, that number one Dodge, like all of its myriad brothers for 25 years, had a steel body, for it was Dodge the pioneer that first brought the safety of steel to building bodies. In the autumn of 1915, Dodge could say, in nine months, more than $25 million worth of these cars have been bought. Through 1916, similar advertisements appeared. 
in its first twenty two months the company sold one hundred thousand cars for more than eighty million dollars then in december came another milestone in dodge history as well as in the history of the industry dodge brought out this sturdy automobile the first all steel closed car ever built dodge continued to merit increased public goodwill as proved by the mounting curve of sales meanwhile dodge was continually improving the car then in nineteen hundred twenty three dodge was again the pioneer but in a new field for dodge undertook to rewrite the dictionary this was the advertisement that did it the second word in the first sentence was not listed as an english word and yet how familiar it is today how impossible to talk about dodge without it it reads its dependability is taken for granted its economy of operation is proverbial out of a fact grew a word if a reader of that advertisement had looked for dependability in the dictionary he wouldn't have found it however he did find it in the dodge of nineteen hundred fourteen and every year thereafter what an impressive list it is of dodge safety and economy features that combined to put that word dependability not only into the dictionary for it's there now but also into the consciousness of every Dodge owner. For 25 years, there has been in this company a continuity of integrity in designing, engineering, and building the car. Combine that singleness of purpose with outstanding mechanical advancements that made Dodge the pioneer of the industry, and the result is a car that year after year has been in the forefront of motordom, a car that caused a word to grow out of a fact, a car whose sheer, rugged, indomitable strength rewrote the dictionary. No wonder hundreds of men have come to think that a job with Dodge is a job for life. Men like these, every one of whom has been working for Dodge since the first car came off the line, November 14, 1914. What do you suppose they think of Dodge and Dodge cars and trucks? As I remember it, Bill, you came to work for Dodge about a week after I did. You're getting old and losing your memory. As I was going home from work, I saw you coming in to get a job. Well, maybe we're both wrong. Anyway, Bill, you and I and all the rest of us have seen a lot of cars and trucks roll out of these plants. They say there's been more than four and a quarter million of them in 25 years. Maybe so. I sort of lost count about 20 years ago. But I will say this. Go ahead, Ed. There isn't any one of them we're ashamed of. You're right. It's been a good place to work, and I only hope the job will be permanent. More power to you, gentlemen. May you all be here when we celebrate our 50th birthday in 1964. Just as content with your work, just as keen to see that the job is done, just as dependable as the car you've been building so well for a quarter of a century. To sell that first Dodge car back in 1914, there was a little group of dealers who made up in loyalty and effort what they lacked in number and facilities. And of that handful of dealers, there are still nearly a hundred men who are proud today to say that their names are still lettered over the door as dealers of Dodge cars and trucks. Men who have enjoyed a happy and mutually profitable relationship. From the small band of 1914, the Dodge dealer organization has reached out not only into every state in the Union, but into practically every county of every state, as well as 70 foreign countries. Until now, Dodge has nearly 5,000 dealers and direct dealers throughout the United States. One reason Dodge has been able to make the efficiency and economy of its cars a habit is to be found in its unexcelled manufacturing facilities. To maintain that reputation means hard work, never-ending research, sound thinking and the unwavering faith of the management of the company in the Dodge car and the Dodge organization. That faith resulted in a large expenditure to retool for the 1939 Dodge. And that's a sound investment backed up by two priceless and completely tangible assets. First of these is the proved ability of Dodge engineers to create outstanding advancements in design that give luster to the Dodge name and brilliance to the Dodge car. Second of those invaluable assets is the proved ability of Dodge dealers to represent the company worthily and well the world over, earning their right to share in Dodge dependability by their devotion to Dodge ideals of serving the motoring public. 
As in 1914, so now a quarter of a century later, for 1939, Dodge can say of the new car, proudly and confidently, it speaks for itself. The new Dodge for 1939 will convince smart America that Dodge will shine even more brilliantly in the future than in the past. And in this, the 25th anniversary year of Dodge, the public will speak its preference with the same old eloquent and definite approval when it says, it's Dodge for mine in 39.